Hey guys, I just wanted to do a video about meditation and some of the things that I've found while going on that inward journey, you could say. One of the biggest things that I found was just centering myself. There's really no right way to do meditation. There's a lot of fancy explanations and videos out there, but I'm just going to go into how I did it and why I started doing it and kind of go from there. Alright guys, basically what I did was I just did some YouTube research just like you guys are doing and I found that there's so many different perspectives. Some call for going with a lotus pose. Some say, oh just chill out under a tree and a bench. You know, whatever. That, none of that even really matters. You can do it anywhere. You know, the easiest place is to start is going to be nature you're gonna find that it just it's almost instinctual there's there's no real second thought about it you just kinda I don't know you just kinda drift into it you just close your eyes if you want like I just close my eyes you would kinda if you've never done meditation before you kinda just start spacing out like you know when you get really distracted by something and you kinda go into a deep trance like you watch some really good entertaining video or something like that, you know, you go into that trance-like state because that's when you open up your subconscious and from there you'll be able to dial in. So what I mean by that is, let's just say you're in the, you know, creek bed by your house or something and there's a bit of, there's a patch of forest, you know, down there and you can hear the, the, the creek, you know, you just start focusing on that sound. You kind of become melted with the moment like you're not really focused on anything else and you know your mind's gonna race that's that's how it is you know you're gonna be like am I doing this right am I not doing this right you you don't really turn off your mind that'll never happen what you end up doing is you just sit there and you let your mind do do its thing because your mind is there to think and that's all it's there for it's to think and process it's not there to be turned off or silent. Even when you're sleeping, it's doing stuff. You're dreaming and all that. So, kind of look at it like this. Your mind is a, like a river, and it's, it's always flowing. You're not gonna stop the river, but you can step out of it. So, when you're in a setting like down in a forest or by running water, which I highly recommend running water if you can't, if for your first time, because it's gonna automatically put you in that theta brainwave state which is basically you know alpha theta brainwave state is just like a a higher version of you know consciousness you're you're more you're more or less breaking down the paradigm of I am the mind more like I am observing the mind you you realize the mind is not your control figure like you are not your thoughts there's no I think therefore I am what it really is is I am being and we have kind of forgotten that you know it's it's hard to be in a society where there's Wi-Fi and stresses and jobs and all these things you have to do every day and so it's just go 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 and really all you got to do is just just sit there just be still and at first you might find that your first few times your mind was racing out of control and you didn't really know if you were there, if you were meditating or if you were just sitting there, you know, quietly. <laughs> so the first few times you do that, it's going to feel kind of unproductive. Like, well, did I do anything? Did this work? Is this a joke? Is this a hype? Well, those are all great questions. and. It is working because as soon as you perceive it to work and you are in a moment of silence and observation and you can feel your heart beating and you can feel your fingertips, the blood going to it, you can feel your hands resting on your leg or whatever position you choose to sit in and you're just kind of there in the moment. You're no longer looking at it from a judged present or past. You're not trying to look at things from, oh, am I doing this right, am I doing this wrong, or 
this is dumb, or you don't, you don't want to put any judgment behind it, you just be yourself, like, you know, and if you're under a lot of emotional stress and trauma, which is probably why a lot of people start meditating too, I know that it's really difficult to calm those out of balance energy centers in your body, you know, they're all over the place and you have all this intense anxiety, and, you know, before you meditate, the best thing to do is probably just dip your feet in a creek or just put it on bare dirt because that grounding has been proven to pretty much reduce inflammation in your body at the given time up to a third. And it's been proven with you know scientific research on that. So it's pretty remarkable that we're so disconnected even on a physical level from the earth that it's messing with us in ways we don't even see. We don't even realize what's going on. We're just bugged out all the time. We're just on overdrive. But if you just sit under a tree or in a grassy field or wherever, you know, in nature that you pick to start this or by the creek, you get in a position that's comfortable. Don't, don't try to go on a lotus pose. If you're not flexible, like I'm not very flexible. I'm not going to lie. I, I broke my leg, you know, eight years ago. There's, it would be ridiculous. I'm not going to go in a lotus pose. It'll never happen. But you don't have to. That doesn't matter. That's that's just a societal preconceived notion. That's just new age bullshit, you know, trying to give you some sort of representation. But really, you're just trying to find yourself. It's an inward journey. It's not someone else's journey. It's not about what you look like or how dumb you think you look in the park and some guy walks by. You know, it doesn't even matter because once you get really in deep into meditation, you become so much more aware. Like, basically, probably after the fourth or fifth time, I really started having like a third eye experience. Like, you start to feel from an extrasensory perception, like, state of mind as you go into the deeper levels of consciousness. It's no longer just like, you know, you're there and you hear the birds chirping and you hear the tree, you feel the wind and the tree, you know, it, it becomes much more than a physical experience because that's just the beginning, that's just, you're kind of reprogramming your subconscious to accept that reality because, you know, it's like a muscle. The more you do it, the stronger it gets, the more powerful meditation becomes and then you can dive into different, you know, dimensions and manifestation and things like that, you know. They're, I don't even know how far you can get into it. I mean, you can watch, you know, there's tons of information on how far can you go. Everybody's experience is different. You know, the monks will have one perspective. The Buddhists will have another. Uh, there's spiritual masters all over the world. They all describe a slightly different, you know, experience because it's all personal. It's all relative to your experience in this moment. So, after about the fourth or fifth time, I really started getting the third eye, you know, you could really feel it coming right from the center of your forehead, that it's, it just, it broadened, it, you can't really even start to explain it, because it almost feels dreamlike, it's like, a, it's almost like a lucid dream, as soon as it pops open, you'll start feeling this pulsating energy, and it'll start coming in waves, almost kind of like you're hallucinating, but you're not, this is just the energy that was always there. And once you open that realm, it pours inside of you and it starts to align all your energy points or what is known as chakras. All these energy points start to align with that. You start to see inside yourself. You start to see the divine connected energy of everything. You start to feel it move through you, but you also you can observe that energy and watch it move through your body and if you're sitting like barefoot on the grass you'll literally even with your eyes closed you can just you can almost see that energy move through you in surges and waves and it'll go through the earth and you can see it soak into the earth with this third eye perception at least what happened with me and you can literally see it like there is a tree that nearby where I, I like to meditate a lot and you know, I always try to meditate near vegetation and trees because of that, you know, divine connection. But basically, you could see that energy moving up the tree, and the tree was like almost like reciprocating or communicating, and just it's feeling like it, you 
could feel that it like knows you're there and then you could almost feel this pulse back like on the return pulse you could feel the tree and this you know I don't know if they call it, I can't remember if they called it circadian rhythm or um, of your heart but the planetary rhythm too you know like the master frequency you can feel that too and you start to tune into that and it, it almost becomes surreal because once you really lock into that and you have your third eye wide open um, every time you meditate you might feel this really intense 30 minute rush and the first you know 30 40 times you meditate there's so much baggage and energy inside of you that just needs cleansing you know it's like a detox for your spirit I guess you can say your soul just needs a detox um, on an energetic level you just you feel so at peace you know I guess you could say like what people say when they have a near-death experience when you get into that really intense you know meditation you could say the deep meditation you know it's it's pretty profound it's it's really hard to explain except by experiencing it it's it's gonna be probably different for everyone I don't know if everyone feels that you know you're more than welcome to drop a comment and talk about this because I'm curious to know how other people perceive it or if it's a really personal like the imagery and all that is really personal but I can tell you that I always see the pulsating energy I see almost like a bluish white or really pure energy entering and through through my body in certain points you know these nodes or these junctions in your body you could feel where there's energy centers and you can feel the further you get into it the more you learn about yourself the more you start seeing wow I have these energy centers that are totally out of whack you might find that for example your solar plexus and your you know lower chest above your navel is you know, responsible for drive and motivation of various things in your life, and you might find that if you have it weakened or imbalanced, that you find lack of motivation or willpower, and you also might find that some of the quirks of your personality come out in meditation. So basically, there's like a whole universe out there. You know, it, there's so many layers to meditation, I couldn't possibly sum it up in a video, nor have I even experienced that, you know, depth of, you know, meditation. For me, I'd say I'm still pretty juvenile in my journey. It's, I feel like I've just barely scratched the surface. Maybe, I wonder if I'll feel that way the whole time, you know. Every time I do it, I learn something new about myself, the world, and like I said, there's no real right or wrong way to do it as long as you're just kind of checking out for a sec, you know, you're just taking a break from the norm, you know, you see how things are put together instead of staying constantly distracted in the, you know, the mind of thought, why, why be in that state of mind, you know, why be stuck in that, so I feel like if you haven't tried meditation or you're kind of teetering on the fence I hope this video inspires you because I saw lots of other people videos and they inspired me and if you're if you don't at least give meditation a try I feel like you're missing out on a big part of the human experience you know we have that unique gift to be able to tap into other realms the dream world the you know other dimensions and it just might kind of bring to the surface our ancient history you know we're we seem we're so new on the scene you know our history seems so vague fuzzy possibly not even true a lot of it's you know bogus it's all a lot of it's edited and I feel like when you go on that journey you know you're going on a journey of truth you're going finding yourself you're finding your inner truth, you're finding questions about the world, you're, you're finding an intuitive side of yourself that you may have never known, you know, and it, it helps propel guidance. And the reason I started doing it was because I was just at a point in my life where I was wanting more. I wanted more than books could tell me. I wanted more than met the eye. I wanted to dive deep. And it was so funny. That's right when I found Infinite Waters, 
I don't know if you've heard of him, he's a really famous YouTuber now. I, I found him back when he was, you know, had been doing it for a couple of years, but he wasn't nearly as big or, you know, into it as he is now. And he really inspired me. I, I recommend checking out Infinite Waters. He's got a lot of great videos and he talks about topics like this. And, you know, he's a real big, big advocate for, you know, vegan lifestyle and things like that. Which, oh, that reminds me. You know, another aspect of meditation. And again, everybody's journey is different. But I found that it, it becomes a little easier with a plant-based diet. You know, and I know that not everyone's ready for that. They don't want to try it, and you know, there might be a lot of you know criticism with that, and that's that's fine. You know, that's a personal choice. I, I decided to try it, and I found that it it increases the clarity of which I'm able to dive into. I I guess from what I had researched that eating a lot of meat and trying to get into those states of mind are more difficult because eating meat, um, essentially you're eating the fear of the animal, because remember I was saying energy is all interchangeable, so if you eat a farmed animal and right before it died, you ate that f fear, and you, it might come up in your meditation, <laughs> so you might have some life changing views, you might have a paradigm shift. And that was just my journey. I don't know, I can't speak for everybody or everything, but you'll find that if you research it, a lot of the, the monks, they live a vegetarian lifestyle because it allows them to use their third eye more sharply. Um, I, there's, I guess when you're built, you know, your body's a temple. If you build your temple on the back of suffering, are you gonna be suffering? You know, if they say you are what you eat, you never know. So it's it's something to think to think about, you know. And like I said, there's no wrong or right way to start meditating. You kind of just do. You just be yourself. You just be, you know. It's not it's not a huge fanfare. There's no no amount of advice that can it help help you with it. it. It's it's honestly awesome, you know. I I love it. You know, I'm I'm an adventurer in that way, like. You know, I'd love to do more traveling too, but doing that journey in yourself, you know, it helps you overcome a lot of obstacles in life. It over helps you overcome a lot of reservations and, you know, things that, that have been haunting you that you didn't even know were there. And, you know, unresolved trauma, it's really good with that. And it's something that you should totally give a try because you might find you like it, or you might find at first it's really awkward and weird, kind of like I did. I thought it was kind of uncomfortable because you have to kind of face yourself. You have to face all your demons, all your positivity, all the good and the bad and the ugly. And it can be a little overwhelming at first. And I know society tries to dump it off and use substances to you know, quell that. Once you've, once you've been meditating for a long time, I can, I can assure you that you'll have no interest in substances or really anything. I mean, the only thing I would suggest is, you know, natural medicines. That's the only thing you would really have interest in because anything that a substance can achieve, any sort of altered state of consciousness can be achieved through meditation. I've been experiencing it myself. I mean, like I was saying, it's like, it's like a trip. <laughs> There's no, you know, the further you get into it, and the more deep you dive into yourself, the more real and authentic you become. And if you were ever struggling with, you know, who am I, what am I supposed to be, what's my point, you know, meditation will help you find that. And you're gonna find that you might have a core objective you came here with, and you'll always know you know, you hit the ground running from a young age and just know those people are, you know, basically living in that, not in that mental state. They're already living in that conscious state. They, they know what they came to do here. But most people, we've forgotten it. You know, years of societal programming 
has gotten the best of us. You know, years of schooling and, you know, structured conformity and it makes it hard when, you know, you have all these people that are adults now and they're like just trying to figure out where the hell they belong and who are they and, you know, the truth is you belong wherever you believe, you, wherever you feel you belong, wherever your intuition guides you, you know, and that's, you'll find that intuition is a lot easier to tap into once you've meditated and you'll learn things that you never even knew were possible and I think this is what's happening all over the planet I think this is why the awakening is happening because you know basically people are realizing that this paradigm we've lived in for generations is a falsehood it's not even, it's not true reality you know a lot of the younger generation born today you know in the last 30 years seems to kind of be like hey you know this is this is a load of horseshit a lot of the stuff the media is a lie the you know the food is poison the, you know there's a lot of negative things on this planet and it it almost seems like a like you could call it a matrix and Breaking and meditation is the best way to break out of that matrix because you're no longer in the physical paradigm. You become at peace with yourself. The further you get into it, you become peaceful. You stop having fear. Um, your anxiety goes way down. You know, you won't need meds or any of that crap. You know, I mean, you never did, but you didn't know. A lot of people didn't know. You know, thankfully, I steered away from that for years before that, but I didn't meditate until only maybe a few years ago. You know, I, I had a subconscious drive to be repulsed by, you know, unnatural things. I always had a philosophy since a young age that if it's not natural, it's not right. And, and that's always held up, you know. Nature knows the way. Humans are just locked in a state of control by a, a very small minority. These people that are in the higher echelons of corporations and government, they're not in it for the people and you know we're all seeing that all over social media and all over the internet this is becoming you know a, a trend <laughs> exposure of corruption and things like that even if we don't partake in the discussion or talk about it openly it's it's relevant to everyone you know everyone is seeing that and we live in the most unique time ever because humanity is essentially going through this massive shift and starting that meditation journey is going to be a wonderful way to tap into that, to tap into your limitless potential because you, everyone's a universe, you know? It, it's like a multiverse. There's, you could say, you know, you're not part of the universe, you are the universe. Or you might be a universe in a universe, at, like if you've ever heard the expression, as above, so below. It's that same kind of reality. So uh, don't let your thoughts and you know belief system get in the way. Even if you know you have some preconceived notions on things, it's good to break out of that because a lot of you know preconceived belief systems, the BS, the belief systems are limiting. You know they're a prison, they're a trap, they're a tool of the matrix. So you never want to get too far into belief. You kind of want to have your use neutral and you know watch observe listen and study and you can study through meditation because you're in a clear state of mind not only you're relaxing yourself but you're finding you know your center you're finding who you are and what you're meant to come here to do and you know your, your soul desire and that's why I loved it you know I'll admit that I still struggle with external things. Everybody does, you know. Sometimes people, will, you know, they'll piss you off or you say something that you don't mean to say. Everybody struggles with that. Everybody has their burst of fire. But at the end of the day, you know, when you can meditate and reflect, you can learn how to be better. You know, and sometimes you struggle with things over and over again before we finally figure it out. But, you know, changing and training your subconscious through meditation is probably the, the best thing you can do right now and it's free, which is borrow some of your time. And I think humans were, I believe that humans were built to have a little moment of peace every day. 
you know, for me it's like 30 minutes. When I first started I needed a whole hour, maybe more. In fact, if I do go a whole hour, I go into some really crazy dimensions. And you'll find that as you strengthen your third eye through meditation and you go deeper into those levels beyond the basic meditation, which, you know, you may stay in basic meditation for a long time. It might just only be a physical experience at first. Um, but once you dive into the deeper realms of meditation, it becomes something you almost feel like, how did I, how did I live life without this so long? How did I get this far? Was I just fumbling around? So I hope this helps helps you out. You know, I hope this inspires you to look at life in a different way. And you might find that meditation is a paradigm changer, or you might have already been heading in this direction and you had other ways to unlock those deep secrets of the universe in your mind. Because there's a limitless knowledge out there and you find that in meditation. You go, wow, I can never learn too much. I can never because the day the day you grow old is the day you stop learning. And I mean you're young no matter how old physically you are if you're still learning. And I hope to be learning to the day I leave this place. So and I hope you find that, you know that type of uh, experience in meditation that I have, that you'll find it very profound. So drop your comments, drop a link for a video, you know, any, anything like that, and, and tell me what you think, what's up <clears throat> with meditation. If you've tried it, if you've never tried it, what your experience is, you know, and uh, stuff like that. So. Yeah, I had a little screw up with my camera a little bit ago, so there was like a big cut in it, but my camera ran out of memory storage. See, it's just like meditation, you're clearing out all that junk. I had all this junk on my memory card, I just pushed it aside and just didn't clean it out and then totally realized that my memory card was full and I couldn't do any more videos, so it just cut me off. So anyway, uh, peace to you all, and I hope you guys have a beautiful night. And Give meditation a try if you haven't. If you have, drop a comment and we'll talk about it. <laughs>